everybody, it's Sam at Mix It Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got another kind of, I guess, male inspired tutorial. So this is part of my Father's Day series and this is an updated version of my multi-loop gift bag. I look back at what I called it and I thought multi-loop, well I guess it was, but I think this one I'm gonna, I don't know, have like a wooden, wooden handle or something like that, I don't know, but it looks really, really cool. I love this more not simplified because there's still a little bit of uh, technique required for it but it's um, certainly update from that other one so I will link that one up here for you because it's really nice and that was using the Let's Celebrate Papers by First Edition and that was last year that I shared that one. So this time I'm using the awesome uh, Wallace and Gromit in themed kind of, these are the cutouts that come with a magazine and I'll share all that in a moment but it's a really nice size gift bag, it all folds completely flat which I know a lot of you now are going to be going yes because you love them just as much as I do because it means we can make and make and make and it takes up hardly any room so these will now be stored away really nicely although these are going to be going off to a new home very soon but it's lovely this is just attached with a velcro dot I do prefer using velcro dots I've said many times by all means use magnets but I'd rather use them in something that's going to actually kind of keep forever like a mini album or something whereas gift bags you know my view on it, they go in the bin eventually. So, oh, I forgot to stick inside, I just noticed. Look, this is sticking up, so I need to stick that down. But that's the inside, loads of room in this one. And then that just goes over like so, and then sticks down. And isn't it cute? It's so adorable, love the colors. I'll share the paper pack in a moment, but yeah, let's crack on and make it. Okay, so this is the magazine. It's Papercraft Essentials issue 174, and it is the Wallace and Gromit is the freebie gift that comes with this exclusive kit and it's everything here. I have shared this already last week in my what did I get video but these are just some of the things you get so these are the cutouts all the die cuts here you can see there's Gromit I think oh no I'm using that one today just for you they are brilliant they are such a lovely size so I do encourage you if you're well you don't even have to be in the UK because they do offer international shipping but do go and check the link out that I share below because yeah it's such a lovely set to have. So that's the one I'm using. I've got a few other like tools here because I am going to be using these wooden dowels which I told everybody to go out and get if you can from the works because I've got quite a few different tutorials planned. This one being one of them but I have I've got three other other tutorials that I will be using these in as well. So yes if you have a works nearby or you do have some wooden dowels hanging around I'll give you the measurements of those nearer the time but yeah they will get used. So this is the paperback I'm using, Grand Plans. It is an old one. I don't have many kind of masculine or even boy kind of papers. So this one I've had a while now, but it gets used a lot for when I do do them. So this is, yeah, Grand Plans, first edition. And again, I'll share any links that I can find. Okay, so I've already done one and I've done one of the sides as well. It's deconstructed. Even the base is put together slightly differently because I actually do have something specific to fit in this. So... Yeah, I have made it according to that, but I also do like to make sure that every bag I kind of make is different from another one. So although this is similar to the one I shared and made last year, the measurements or the construction are slightly different. So you'll need two pieces of eight by 12, okay? And you are gonna score along the 12 inch side, you wanna score at two inches and 11 inches. And on just one of them, you wanna also score at four. Okay, oh, I just went to do it and I don't need to do it because I've already done that score line on this one here. So I've already done the back of mine. I should be able to cover that a little bit. Also, if you do score a little tip, so you want to do that twice. I'll show you that little tip in a minute because I will do that. Then with one of the sides, you will need two pieces of five by 11. Okay, along the 11 inch side, you want to score at four. Okay. And then along the five inch side, you want to score at half an inch and at four and a half, okay? Then because these pieces are actually going to be, they're going to be a decorative feature, the hinges, whereas usually I stick them inside. This time I'm going to stick them outside to actually make a feature. Because of that, and because the bag folds flat, if you fold these pieces up first, and then pop it back in along the 11 inch side, you also then want to score at six inches. 
okay and you just want to score at six inches just in that section there because we don't want to have our score line going over these pieces here because you're actually going to see them so now you'll see that score line is just inside so you want to do that on both pieces so you know fold and burnish those up pop it in and score just that inside piece at six but it's just much easier to do it that way okay there's also another piece of cardstock here and this is going to be for the very bottom and this is four by nine okay so this piece here where I did go and score wrong if you just turn it over where the lump is so you've scored obviously that way so you've scored into the cardstock flip it over and it should be raised if you go over it with your bone folder just a few times and it will totally remove it so actually now on this side it should be really faint you just see it's ever so faint just there but it's completely smooth and on this side here it's very faintly there you just about make it out but compared to this one here which you can still really see so it's just a little tip there just turn it over and just go back over it with that these pieces here I will go through them when we get to it and again it is optional it's to decorate the ends of the dowels there okay now just remember there's one more score line apologies along these pieces here along the 8 inch side so where you've scored along the 12 inch at 2 and 11 rotate it so the 11 inch is at the top and you want to score at two and a half just down to that first score line and at five and a half just down to that first score line okay and then rotate it back along the 12 inch side and I just used my stylus and you just want to pop a little notch at nine inches flip it and pop another little notch at nine inches okay they're all guides really just to help us when we come to cut it and everything just makes it a bit easier if you put them into place and it saves us having to measure later on okay so with this one well with both pieces now you want to fold and burnish all of the score lines so those ones and those ones and then you'll have that extra and then with these pieces here you want to fold and burnish obviously so I'll do that one and that one and then we're going to add oh and I've just done what you don't want to do so we went to all that effort to not fold because you don't want to create um, the fold on these pieces again it's I've done it but it, it obviously it isn't the end of the world I'm just going to try and remove them a little bit you probably cannot really see yeah I've done it there but you probably can't really tell let's not worry about it hey ho it really isn't the end of the world so what you want to do now is we need to create the kind of score lines to be able to have our card fold flat okay we also need to score our side pieces I forgot that other score line so where we went and done that six inch one like so you want to then take it out pop it back into this position and you want to score it two and a half down to that first score line okay so now to make them fold flat at the bottom of that score line that you've just done you just want to bring your ruler in and you just want to score from corner from that score line down to the corner so there and here like so now when you fold and burnish everything try not to fold that score line there because you don't want to fold through there like I went and done but you kind of well you can just about see it there but I'm not too worried if you also ever do score something wrong make a feature of it so I could now in fact I'm going to I'm going to show you what you can do if you do something and then you think do you know what I really didn't need that score line there I'm now going to make a feature of this so I'm going to score now at every single score line just up to that first score line okay so now I have that really cool effect so if you do have a score wrong if you can make it a feature so now I've only done them on the front ones I haven't done them on the back but you can if you want but yeah there you go it's a quick way to save something okay so where were we so we've scored these and I've just gone and done that so now we need to do a bit of cutting so what you want to do is with the triangle piece here facing upwards you are going to cut this one up to the first score line and this one here up to the first score line remove those pieces completely and then you actually want to take wedges off these as well okay so you can do all that at once but I like to do it all separate so that you know how it all looks okay and then you want to take a little wedge good job because I've just ripped that a little bit I'm going to take a wedge off of that a wedge off of that 
and I've already done those two. But now you can see what you've got there. And then with your triangle pieces, you just want to fold them up like so. Okay. So those pieces now are all ready, and then we will have these two pieces. So where you scored, that's your two inch score line at the bottom, and then you've got this one inch one at the top, we scored down. You want to cut down those score lines. So there's one there and one there, and then you want to remove that piece, okay? Like so. And then, where you've done those little notches at nine inches, you just want to start your scissors, that's why I love these long scissors, and just cut all the way up. If you want to draw a pencil with your ruler, by all means. But I'm just going to remove that little bit there, and then again. So that's why they were there, just easy, quick markers for you, like so. Okay, so again, you'll have two pieces. I'd already, I've already gone and done that on there for the minute, but the only difference should be is you'll have one that will have an extra score line, and that's going to be the back piece. So that will be your score line at two on both, but remember I said to do one that's got a score line at four on the back. Okay, and then have them both cut. And you can see this bit here will end up curling over this piece of dowel. So moving on to that now. These are, these are from the works, and these ones measure in particular if you do have any in your garage, these are just under five mil. So you want something around, in fact they are, they're, let's say they're five mil, okay? Because that's usually how these things are measured. Now you want to cut yours down to the width of your bag, but just slightly shorter. So mine end up being seven and three quarters, because this is eight inches width, okay? So with my ruler, I'm just gonna lie that down there, grab my pencil and just do a pencil mark, just kind of around like so, okay? Now, there's a few ways that you can do this. I did use a pair of scissors and it did kind of do it, but I'm just worried I'm gonna ruin my scissors. These do need a good clean anyway, but you can cut this with scissors, but it is gonna take a lot of strength. So if you've got, you know, if you've got weakness in your hands, then I wouldn't suggest doing that. So I've found that it's best that what I do is I use my cutting knife to start it off and then I've got my little craft kind of tools here and inside this one here I have this piece and it cuts like butter, it just finishes it off. So all I'm doing here is starting it off just by literally just sawing all the way around. I mean I could go all the way through with this but I also don't want to blunt my, although I do have plenty spares, I don't want to blunt this too much. So I'm just going through until it gets a bit too hard to do because it obviously gets quite tight like so okay and then I can just use this now just to finish it off and I just line it up inside there you can hear it squeezing it that one and that side <laughs> and it shoots off so there you have it okay so and I've got a little bit of sandpaper here I'm literally just going to tidy up the ends now you can obviously paint this as well if you want. There we go. So now I've got my wooden dowel all ready. Now these pieces here, they don't have to be as long as they are, but I've done them a quarter of an inch wide and that will just wrap around like so. So they can actually be a quarter of an inch by one inch will be fine. And I'm going to stick them around each end like so. And I just think it ties everything together. Okay, so that's that piece all ready. Now we can bring over one of these. So this is the last one for me, because obviously I'd already done that other one. But you, I just found it helped if you just very carefully curled over that top piece, okay? And then I'm just gonna grab my glue, and you wanna pop your glue all in that section there. You can use double-sided tape if you want. It, it should work. Um, especially a red tape, I can't imagine why that won't um, stick really well to the wood. And then what I found easiest to do is line up your doweling along this piece first so you've got an equal overhang and then try and keep it obviously straight but roll it up to this piece and that way I'm going to roll it all the way up to the edge, just spread that glue out and then roll it back on itself and that way you know you've got it you know, right in the middle. 
add a bit more glue there actually and just roll it right down to the score line okay and then you should be able to fold it back on itself on that score line so it kind of folds towards you and now you should have a really nice neat you know handle okay now we just need to put everything together so as I said it's all deconstructed and then you'll also have and you may want two pieces of this this is the four by eight it's entirely up to you that's for the base so what I'm going to do first of all is my front so you want the piece that doesn't have the second score line on it and obviously I've already gone and decorated those pieces there so you want to add glue or double-sided tape to the sides there and then I'm going to flip it all over and you want to line up the two inch score line with the bottom of here so don't worry that the bottoms are different to this piece obviously I made mine to fit something specific so it is a slightly different size to the other one but I think that's good it means you know if you are looking for something for something specific you can hunt through my tutorials and see what one will work best for you fold it back over and just go over and just make sure that glue is spread out so I don't want to take away too many of my score lines there but I think that looks quite cool actually I like that so that's that one and then grab another side piece so my other one with the score lines that I made and again pop my tape pop my glue all down there you can also stick it this way so you can fold all of that underneath there and then line up that two inch score line with the top of the tab here. Everything should line up nicely and fold that over. And now we're going to do the back. And just again. And I've just done what I didn't want to do. So I put the glue on the outer side and you don't. You want to be gluing. I'm so used to gluing my tabs on the outer side. On these you want to be obviously gluing on the inside and I forgot. But it, again it's not the end of the world because I'm going to show you now. We stick this one down. It just means the back, they're concealed, but I didn't do these score lines on them anyway. Whereas the front, obviously, you can see it. But, you know, no one's going to know that that wasn't what you were meant to do anyway, so it doesn't matter. As long as you're consistent <laughs> and you don't have one sticking out and all the rest are sticking under, then it'll be fine. So then this one I'm going to add my glue on top, but you want to be adding it underneath if you want to have them all exposed. So again, you can have it either or because some of you may not want to have that um, the tabs hanging out. And then the last one, this should just sit perfectly over the top. Okay, so now you see how that's all coming together. So that score line needs to be worked a bit more there. There we go, like this. So now the base, obviously this piece is shorter. When they're both together, they kind of form the, the whole base area. But what you want to do first of all is stick these in first. We're going to stick each of them over the top and then just to kind of make that look neat, I've got that piece to then completely go once it's all lined up over the bottom there, like so. So what I would say might be worth you doing is just take some little wedges off of each of these ends because you might get a little bit, just a little bit overhanging. And I know a lot of you also like to add chipboard to the base just to kind of reinforce it, especially if you've got something heavy. So you can, you know, by all means you can do that. So I'm going to add my glue to the bottom of this one and stick that one up. So you just make sure all your sides are all lined up. And then I'm going to add glue to that one and just fold that one down and I'm actually going to add two pieces I'm going to stick one inside as well so I'm going to stick this one inside okay and then I've got this piece here which is a piece of scrap but I think I can just make it work I really don't want to have to cut yeah mine's a little bit I mean you do want it slightly shy of 8 by 4 but I'm just my ends are all a bit crooked there we go that will do it's only going to go on the base okay and then it's entirely up to you how you want to have the piece that kind of comes over so you'll see I've got this bit here so the width of it depended on what I had stuck to the bottom so this one here is actually smaller so that is going to stick 
like that because it's actually a little bit off centre. So I'm going to add some glue to this first. I'm just going to show you how I do this because everybody's is going to be different. I want to make sure obviously that is nice and straight. And he's going to now be a little bit higher as well because he is slightly smaller. So I'm going to wrap that around and kind of roughly, you know, hold it where I think it needs to be. So, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Everybody's is going to be a bit different. Just help it along a little bit there. And then I'm just going to add glue to about half an inch. And then just stick that and just make sure it's nice and centered like so so now when I flip it over wherever it's going to lie so if you open it up so my base is now super strong and obviously it looks nice in the inside if you bring that over and let it kind of sit naturally imagining there's something in it and then I've got my velcro dots these are the these are really large they're really nice ones and these are the dot and dab collection by Trimcraft, and these ones measure Usually I use 16 mil. These are 20 uh, 20 mil. Okay, so they are a bit bigger. I'm just going to stick one one side just under there. So that's the pair together, and then just bring that one over. And again, just make sure it's all lining up, kind of sitting where you want it. So I'm going to do the handles differently, and I'm using this rope. And this is from Craft. It's that collection, that range that's in. The range and in the works and places like that it's just called crafting rope you get eight meters i paid 129 for this from a local shop near me actually it wasn't a craft store it was like a kind of a yeah homeware store kind of thing so what i plan to do is i'm going to use my hot glue and i'm just going to run a few kind of loops around each end so i want to hide the kind of start of it and just kind of with a bit of hot glue just kind of wrap it a couple of times and hopefully that works. Let me just try one because I haven't done this yet. Okay, so there you go. I think that's worked well. You can see I've just wrapped it around twice. So I'm going to go and carry that on. Okay, there you have it guys. Two really fun gift bags. Slight update of the one that I've done before, the triple loop, double loop, multi loop, that was it. <laughs> one that I've done and like I said I will share that one if I hadn't already. It will be shared up here as well somewhere. But yeah, hope you liked it today. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.